cuties and welcome to day 22 of Litmus. We are almost near the end of Litmus. This is a scary, scary thought. Hello. How are you? How has your holidays been so far? I don't know what this voice is. Anyway, today we are doing a tag video. I recently discovered this tag um, and it is by Rick Mac McDonnell. Mac McDonnell. That's how we pronounce it. Mac McDonnell. It's not McDonnell. McDonnell. I discovered it from him. And he created this tag and it is the in or out tag. So basically, he has made a list of 26 things. <laughs> it's a long one. Of if you uh, are in, that means you like the thing. If you're out, it means you don't like the thing. So I thought it was a really fun tag. It's got a bunch of different quirky things for us bookish literary people. And let's get into the tag, shall we? Number one, reading the last page first. Oh, I'm way out on this one. So far out, like far out dude. No, I'm out. I, I do know people who do this and I can see the appeal of doing it. I... no 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 no. <laughs> no 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 no. No spoiler. I don't want to be spoiled. I can see the temptation. Sometimes I am tempted when like I'm in the middle of a book. I wouldn't read it first but if I'm in the middle of a book and the things are going really badly sometimes I want to jump ahead and make sure a if a character is alive. If, I just need to see their name. I don't need to read anything else. I just, okay, I see their name, they're fine. Or, you know, I can see the appeal of wanting to know, like, happy ending and stuff. I've, I've been tempted, but I resist. Two enemies to lovers. If you know me, you know I love enemies to lovers. I love it so much. It's one of my favorite tropes. Yeah. I love it so much. Totally in. Number three, dream sequences. Really on the fence on this one. Like, when they're done really well, I'm fine with them, but as a whole, I think they're not usually done well. So I'm gonna say I'm out on this one, but occasionally. Like I just read um, A Gathering of Shadows and that one does dream sequences really well because you don't know you're in the dream yet. And that's the kind, kind of dream sequence I like is when you're not totally sure if it's a dream or not. That's the kind I like. Number four, love triangles. And we are so out, 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 out. No, thank you. I'm not a fan of the love triangle. It's even when they're done well, I still don't like them. Number five, cracked spines. I'm also out on this one. I do appreciate a cracked spine and how much love the book has, but like, it's also not hard to not crack the spines, okay? Hold on, come here. I just physically read Gathering of Shadows, as I just said. You see this? I went through this book. There is zero crackage on this spine, okay? It's not hard. You don't have to yank your book open. Gentle, gentle. Anyway, number six, back to my small town. And I'm, again, on the fence with this one, but I'm gonna say more in considering Search for the Phoenix literally does this. So I would be uh, very hypocritical if I said I was out on this one. It does depend on the book though. Some of them just don't work and other ones do, you know, blah, you know but for the most part, I think I'm in. Number seven, monsters are regular people and I'm in on this one. It has to be done well. What I prefer is not like the paranormal romance kind of stuff, but I do like it when they're just average people trying to get by and they're also idiots. Like if we have a what we do in the shadows situation, I'm way more in for that than I am for like a Twilight situation. Definitely like monsters as regular people with their own regular human problems. It's fun. Number eight, no paragraph breaks. And I'm just confused by this because like how? So I'm, I'm way out, I'm way, way out on this one. But how, how do you, how? How? What is this, just one long stream of consciousness? I don't understand what this, this one actually means. Is that a thing? I don't think I've ever read a book that does that. What? What? Number nine, multi-generational sagas. And I am gonna say I'm out on this one. It has to be done well, but I'm not a huge fan of it. I don't like going back and forth in time with stuff. I hate time travel, that could be part of it. But I'm just not, I'm not into the generational ones. It's, it's, it's been done well. Like I read Dark and Deepest Red by Anna Marie Micklemore, but of course it's by Anna Marie Micklemore, so. That was fine. But I've read other ones where I'm just like, Ugh. I barely get away with books that are like now and then thens. It's, it's hard. I just, I get too confused in it, but I'm gonna say I'm out. Number 10, rereading. And I feel bad about this, but 
Like I would love to reread more, but I cannot at this point. So I have to say currently I'm out, but would love to be in. I would love to reread the, some of the books that are on my shelf that I've already read, but the sheer amount of books on this shelf guilts me into not doing that. So I only ever reread during a readathon where like one of the prompts is to reread a book, but I don't, I don't actively do it because this. For now I'm out, but one day I will be in. Number 11, artificial intelligence. And I am in for this one. Most of my favorite characters in a lot of books that are sci-fis have artificial intelligence and they're usually my favorites, all right? We've got Mbot, okay, for one, <laughs> we've got that. We've got um, in Illuminae, we have Aiden. In Aurora Rising, we have the little pad guy. What is it called? Um, 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 Magellan? Is that what the character's name is? Magellan? I think it's Magellan. But I, I love AIs, especially snarky AIs. That is beautiful to me. Number 12, drop cap. So what is a drop cap? If you don't already know, that is when the first letter of a chapter is like way bigger than the rest. So like the old timey ways they used to do it. And I'm in on this one. I love that. Especially if it's all artsy and cool. I believe Hollis book does this, Tower of Dogs. I think, I think she does this. Number 13, happy endings. And of course I'm in on this. I love happy endings. I want everyone to be happy and safe and loved and together in the end. I don't like unhappy endings. I don't care if that like lessens the stakes if you know something's gonna be a happy ending. I don't think it does. I think I'm just more relieved by the end because things could have gone really badly. But I love happy endings because I want a happy ending. It's always up in the air and you don't know and some books are bittersweet and I kind of end up hating those more than with happy endings. I just like happy endings, leave me alone. Number 14, plot points that only converge at the end. And I'm in on this one. I I know for some people it's like, but you spent most of the book confused. I love that. I love kind of being, what the hell is going on? And then when it all just like clicks into place, I'm like, oh, love it. That's it's be I commend the writer for doing it so well that I couldn't put it into place myself. Some people find this to be like an insult to their intelligence, but I'm, I always think I'm stupid. So I guess I can't really get insulted by it. I love this where you're just not sure how these go. That actually kind of happened with Sunshield where you have these three different POVs in this world. And you're not quite sure how they're gonna tie in together, but they all have their own very good narratives anyway. So you don't feel like you're stupid or anything. You just feel like you're reading three different stories and then they converge and you're like, oh, cool. Number 15, detailed magic systems. And I'm in on this. I love details. Uh, I, I don't love info dumps, but I do love very different magic systems for one. And I love just all the intricacies of different magics, especially because some people will write their magic systems and there's no like penalty for it. And I feel like there always has to be a, a give and take in magic systems when we have that option. I love it. Woo, we're getting into more ins now, finally. Oh, I'm about to get an out. <laughs> Number 16 is classic fantasy races. So things like elves and vampires and goblins. And I, I don't really like the staples. I'm, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of it because I want to learn more about other ones. I want more creatures to love and learn about. I'm, you know, it's like, it's been done before kind of thing. That's why I'm kind of sick of most paranormal romances because it's like, oh, it's a vampire, it's a werewolf, says the person who has a vampire and a werewolf in their own books. But that was a different situation. I just like learning different creatures and I want more writers to create their own and imagine more. Like so many people feel like they have to pull directly from mythology or something. And it's like, you can make up your own stuff. That's what writing's about. Make up your own shit. I am unfortunately out on this one. Number 17, unreliable narrator. I'm in. I love unreliable narrators, especially when they turn out to be a villain. That's one of my favorite things because you're rooting for this person and then you're like, oh no. Oh, that bad. <laughs> it's compelling because it shows that, you know, not all characters are black and white. They're gray characters that you're not quite sure. But 
It could also be other things that are happening around them. And I, I love that. I love unreliable narrators. Next up, speaking of that a little bit, is evil protagonists. And I love a good villain story. I love it. Because I love seeing the complexity of it. I don't love, you know, a bad person winning. And, and most of the time in those retellings and things, they're not winning. But it is just like their origin story or something. And I really, really enjoy reading those stories and seeing how a person goes from where they were, where usually they're like a good person, and it leads them down that dark path. I love seeing the step by step. It just makes you able to, I feel like, empathize more with people and maybe people in your own life that are kind of down that path, you can help get push them off it by understanding the cues that some people do when they're heading down that dark way. And I think it just actually builds more empathy, not yay villain, you know, not yay, I love a good murderer. No, not that. It's interesting to see the path or, you know, it's the hero was actually the villain the whole time. That's why I like, I read um, Lost Boy the untold story of Captain Hook, or the real story of Captain Hook, I forget the, the subtitle for it, but by Christina Henry. And it showcases Peter Pan as the villain, whereas Captain Hook was doing a good job, but, you know, the victors get to tell the story. So, that I really, really enjoy. Number 19, The Chosen One, and I'm, I'm out on this one. I, I'm not a huge fan of it. It's usually not done well. And I just think there are better ways to tell stories than having a chosen one. And don't tell me Ashport's a chosen one story because it's not totally. All right, I was young when I wrote it. Leave me alone. <laughs> Number 20, when the protagonist dies. And I think I'm out on this one because that's not a happy ending and I'm more of a happy ending person. There's some people who are saying like, oh, the protagonist dies early. And I'm like, well, then they weren't a protagonist because for me, a protagonist has to remain through the story. It's the main character that we're following that's your protag. So I don't understand why people say that. Like, like people say that Ned Stark is the protagonist of Game of Thrones, but I'm like, is he though? Because I don't think he was. I think he was a main POV for a while, but I don't think he was the protagonist. Not that I've read it, but I watched the show. And so everyone's like, oh, the main character died. And I'm like, was he a main character? I don't think he was. But things where we have like Divergent, spoiler alert, Trist dies. And I didn't like that. I did not like that ending at all. I thought it was dumb. I'm gonna say I'm out on that. <laughs> Number 21, really long chapters. I think everyone who knows me would reach through the camera at this point and slap me across the face if I said I was out because I'm in. I also actually really hate short chapters. I really, really don't like it. Like when I read The Maze Runner, which I can't, I can't stand James Daphne anymore. But when I read Maze Runner, I kept getting really frustrated because the chapters were basically scenes and I hate that. I like a decent sized chapter because as you progress, it when it's a short chapter, it makes you feel like you're getting nowhere. And then, but with long chapters, you're like, oh, I just read this really long chapter and now I'm halfway through the book, you know? I, I like that more. I like long chapters, leave me alone. Number 22 are French flaps. So, who has a French flap on you? Hamnet, do you? I can't find one right now. I know I have some, but it's where it's a paperback book and it has the, like, like a hardcover does, you know, with the flappy to hook around. It's that, but it's with a paperback and I'm in on those. I like those. I think it adds just a little bit of flair to a regular paperback and I feel like it protects it more because usually those with French flaps are a little bit thicker of a paper, so it's less likely to get damaged when you have it. So I definitely like French flaps. Number 23, deckled edges. And I'm in and out on these. I'm in because aesthetically I think they're pleasing. I am out because of this reason. When I am reading a paperback, sometimes I like to go like this and like pet the book <laughs> like that. With deckled edges, it doesn't work as well. Too many chunks go flying. I don't like that. It's chunky. It's not smooth. So as aesthetically pleasing as this is to me, like I love seeing it. I don't like holding it. So I'm going to say I am out. Purely for my weird petting habit of books. <laughs> Number 24, signed copies. And I'm in for this. I love a good signed copy. I just like knowing that the author touched the book. <laughs> 
I do prefer not personalizing it because then if I don't like the book I can sell it for a little bit more but it is a little weird to like hold more value to something just because there's a signature in it but I really do like a good signed copy I have an entire shelf featuring my signed copies for some of them there's more all around but those are the ones featured on the shelf and I just like it. I also like getting surprised with a, with a signed copy where I was like excited for the book but oh look I didn't know it was signed. I had that when I was going through my unhaul. <laughs> I was discovering oh hey this is signed. Didn't know that. Number 25 dog earring pages and I'm so far out on this one. <laughs> I, I just like keeping my books pristine. I don't like dog earring. I don't like the, the writing in books. I don't like the crack spines and things I like keeping them pristine and beautiful and what's I now have a bigger pride to this because as I was unhauling stuff and taking it to second and Charles this guy <laughs> I didn't realize I was such a regular but I guess I am and I'm recognizable now he's came up to me was we were exchanging and he's like I just have to say I really love when you come in because your books are always in such great condition and I'm just like Thank you. Also forget my face. <laughs> Apparently I'm very well known at Second and Charles now for having impeccably conditioned books. I'm holding true to that and we are not dog earing. And lastly, chapter titles instead of numbers and I'm so in on this. I would also be a hypocrite if I chose, if I said out because all of my chapters have chapter titles and usually they're a bad pun. That's what I love the most about chapter titles is bad puns. Love it. What can I say? I love, I wish we did this more and I wish we could just see more happening. One thing that was really good when I read The Rest of Us Just Live Here, while I didn't enjoy the book entirely, I did appreciate that the chapter titles were also telling a separate story and that was really fun to experience. I thought that was very, very clever and I love chapter titles. Let's see, am I more in or out? For the outs, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, which means we have 14 ins. I'm barely in. Yo, <laughs> barely. I'm in. That's the tag. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you want to do it, let me know. Put it in the comments so I can go watch it because I would love to see more people do this tag. And you can put it in the comments below or on Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter. Check me out on Kofi to support me as a content creator. I would super appreciate it. And I will see you tomorrow, cuties. Bye. I do that I hit record and then I'm not ready stop 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 hold on this is gonna give somebody a seizure oh my god focus focus on my face I know it's not fun to look at all the time camera